Hi there, welcome to the Brown Lounge. I'm Holly Brown and today I'm delighted to share David O'Dwyer who's the chef at a wonderful and very famous long-standing restaurant in Seattle called The Phoenicia. The Phoenicia has been around for about what four decades and it's, it's really a beloved Mediterranean restaurant. Um, we're lucky enough to have it be very local to where we live and David is uh, the chef there and uh, he brings some wonderful creativity to the restaurant and uh, we're putting together a winemaker's dinner, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we were tasting some of the things for this winemaker's dinner, and I fell in love with this dish. So I had to have you on the Brown Lounge. Uh, well, thank you for having me, Holly. Uh, it's great to be here, and uh, I'm glad you like this dish so much. So we have, uh, it's my uh, play on ham and cheese. Sounds great. So one of the things I love about this dish is, well, first of all, I love tapas, and um, I love to have tapas dinners where we just serve one thing at a time and it's just small plates and each thing is really handcrafted and it's hot and it comes right out of the oven we all sit around the the island in the kitchen we just have wonderful tapas and wine um, this particular dish has such a wonderful combination of flavors vegetables against the soft creaminess of the prosciutto and the and the cheese and then the wonderful finish of the sweet caramel so anyway i fell in love with this dish you're going to tell us more about it how to make it so you can make it at home with your friends so stick around we'll be right back so hi so with our pepper here we've already cut them into uh cut off the ends and we're going to now cut off in the inside. Uh, if you don't feel comfortable doing this, you don't have to. This just adds a little bit of texture and keeps everything nice and clean. So you take off that little white little bit and of course you can still use that. No, no need to waste that. So you have nice clean inside of the pepper and then we just do very simple slices. Pop that in there. Is there our onion? Some people like to go this way, but I like to go with the grain. And uh, when you cut an onion, when you have a whole onion, uh, and you're doing slices like this, you actually want to start your blade at an angle. If you go straight, then it's not going to be even slices all the way throughout. So you start at a slight angle, and then as you get towards the top, you'll see my blade go straight. And then when I get to the other side, I'll start rotating the other way down. So that's why I get nice, even slices throughout the whole entire onion. We have our pickled fennel. Just add that in there. We have our baby arugula. Just a touch of there. We're gonna take a little bit of lemon. And we're just gonna take about half a lemon, squeeze in there for just a touch of acid. Salt, pepper, and toss. This is a very simple caramel sauce recipe. Not very complicated to home cook can do. So we're gonna start off with equal parts sugar and water and just a touch of lemon juice. So we'll get our pot, add our sugar, add our water, Bring this on to a uh, medium, medium high heat. Uh, you can go slower if you want. With your spoon, you're just gonna slowly dissolve that sugar. And give this just a light squeeze. Take about a teaspoon to a tablespoon. The reason for the lemon is that uh, it'll help kind of bind your caramel together. Uh, if your caramel does start to uh, crystallize and get really kind of uh, break down and get kind of sugary and not really that nice creamy texture that you're looking for. And splash in a little bit more lemon juice to keep that caramel nice and luscious and beautiful. Okay, so if you can see here on the side, you have a little bit of this crystallization building up. And the best way to get rid of that is you just take a brush with water, 
you just brush the sides over the top of it and let that little remaining water brush right in there so all that sugar becomes a caramel so once we get uh, the caramel down to this stage about 10 to 15 minutes depending on how high your heat is at this point you don't want to walk away from it whatsoever so we're going to take we have just about a quarter cup of heavy cream be very careful when you add this because it's going to bubble up on you a little bit and that's perfectly fine you want to be very careful because sugar when it gets really really hot we're just give this a little bit of a stir and we can even at this point churn off our heat and our caramel is this beautiful color and then we're going to take just a touch of sherry, about a tablespoon or so. Um, just gonna add just a little bit. It's gonna bubble up a little bit more, and if you uh, you want to have it so it has a slight tang, so you're getting the flavor of the sherry through there, and it's gonna give a uh, gonna really blend well with the sugar and the caramel. If you don't feel like you're tasting it, add just a touch more. This, oh, is, yeah. this is the Dave's ham and cheese part, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. This is, this is my, uh, my, my little twist on it. Yeah. So you're going to pan sear it. We're going to we're gonna pan sear it, but you can also do this as well after you make it up. If you're doing a dinner party, you can easily put these in the oven, like 350 degrees, 400 degrees, and go mingle with your gas. Check on them every couple minutes. Once the cheese starts gooing out and the meat gets crispy, you know you're ready Perfect. to go. So you don't have to be sitting there standing over your stove watching this so allows you to socialize while making a great tapa for all your guests i love it so. i love it okay so show us how to roll it up we're going to take just a little bit of pesto you can use homemade pesto store-bought pesto doesn't matter you can even throw in a little basil leaf in there you want or not put any in there at all and then roll and just really simply roll it up so now that we've assembled uh, all of our ham and cheese we're ready to cook them. You can definitely do these a day ahead of time. Um, they will hold just fine. We're gonna turn our uh, heat to medium. If you want to, you can get your pan hot. The prosciutto de parma has so much fat, I'm not even gonna add oil when I'm using a non-stick pan. So all you're doing here is you're just gonna let them hang out until they start to sear on the bottom. Once they sear on the bottom, you're gonna flip them over, and the nice thing is, you have the skewer. Indication of when you need to flip is when you start to feel them, you start to see that cheese start to goo out. So that's why we have it on skewers. <laughs> Makes it easier. Now you see that nice little browning. And you go a few more minutes, and now we're just gonna do a couple more minutes on this side. I'm gonna actually turn my heat and my pan down very low. The pan is already really, really hot, so it's gonna finish my cooking process for me without me actually having to keep it on uh, too high. So we have, we have, we're gonna start off with our salad here, our fennel pepper salad, and give it another quick little toss. Mm -hmm. We're just gonna take a little bit, put it right down the middle of the plate, make a nice kind of line. Then we're gonna take, thank you, Holly. Take that for you, there you go. So then we're gonna take, mm. I definitely want to lick the pan. The cheese, yeah, no. The <laughs> yes. Sometimes the cheese will stick to the pan, and that's uh, perfectly fine. Using a nonstick is great. You can either take it off the skewer, or you can leave it right on the skewer. Yeah. So We're going to put it right on top. And last but not My least, favorite part. the sherry caramel. Mm. And this is such a nice little touch. And then you just kind of go oh. right around over the top. Mm. So pretty. This, this is the part that got me. I mean, this is the part that got Everything was delicious, and then when I tasted the caramel against the saltiness and then the, the wonderful texture of the cheese and then the crunchiness of the, uh, the lemon and everything on the, the vinaigrette on the uh, vegetable. Really simple. Simple, yeah. beautiful. And that's, and that's Spanish food. I think that you're going to love this dish. It is a great dinner party dish. So um, join us next time. I'll, as I always say, subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on Twitter, um, like us on Facebook, and you'll just keep up with all of the fun things that we're doing, including the events that we're doing, like this wine baker's dinner. Yeah. Yeah? Excellent. Okay, okay well, we'll see you later. We're going to eat. Enjoy. <laughs> Thanks.
Thank mm-hmm. you.